Treasurer Josh Frydenberg says assumptions around border closures and the vaccine rollout will be included in tonight's budget. Joining us live is Simon Westaway. He's the Executive Director at the Australian Tourism Industry Council. Simon, what is your expectation as to some of those key details we should see unveiled tonight? Oh, good afternoon. Yes, I, we really are wanting to see the detail. Now, the, the good thing about the budget process and the four-year rolling estimates that are applied on all the economic uh, you know, metrics... Uh, it will obviously include some detail around uh, what Treasury's position and obviously then what the government's position is around um, the international border um, and how it will look to be unfolded, if you like, and, and progressively reopened over the coming over the coming years. Uh, look, there has been a lot of debate in recent days around exactly what uh, the, a, a closed international border means for Australia over the short, medium and longer term. Um, you know, 2022 has been bounced around and not a lot of specifics in between. So, yeah, look, it's obviously a really critical time um, for us uh, to really ascertain what, what, where, where the government's at and uh, what the expectations are at. Of course, we do have, obviously have to take, take on board um, the reality that uh, over recent, recent periods uh, we've seen the, the highest levels of COVID-19 um, ac across the world. Um, obviously, it's been... Uh, long debate around the issues in India, uh, for example. But uh, so, look, it's a, it's a sobering time. I mean, we obviously want to have a, a reopened international border, but it obviously has to be done safely as well. Simon, is there any real point, though, in setting that target for opening the international border when we all realise that even at this point, it is really a, a movable feast? And the example you cited of India um, you know, really highlights that. Oh, no, I think we do need a target, without question. I mean, look, we had a target, to be frank, around the Trans-Tasman um, border, uh, and it was always looking at that first quarter, possibly moving to the second quarter of this calendar year, and that was achieved. So, absolutely, I think targets do a number of things. They obviously force the point. They obviously put, um, you know, the resources of government uh, on, a, on, a, on a focal point, if you like, and I, I think that's what, there's, and that's what the industry is really calling for, is we've got to, we've got to start really understanding what a progressive reopening of the international border looks like. Uh, will it be, obviously, New Zealand, possibly the South Pacific, in time our, our neighbours in the Pacific Islands? Is that, is that the extent of it? Or will, will we be seriously looking at Europe, but particularly around cohorts, such as you know, the working holiday makers, which many of them come out of both Europe and, indeed, Asia? And, of course, the international student market's a, a critical one for this country, um, equally in terms of tourism exports. It's a... It's a key services export earner for the country, and obviously there's a double there's a double benefit with the backpackers and the students in terms of the uh, seasonal seasonal work and, and labour support that they provide, um, particularly to our sector. So, in terms of funding, we already have seen some announcements in recent months from the government targeted towards the tourism and travel sector. Are you expecting any big surprises today? I know that many in your industry have been keen to see a sort of job keeper type um, program targeted at your sector. That seems to have fallen on deaf ears so far. Yeah, look, it has. I mean, JobKeeper um, was was on a death march, and that that uh, occurred at the end of March. And look, in an ideal world, the industry needed more time. I mean, we needed at least another quarter um, because the reality was the, uh, the the tourism and hospitality and accommodation industry uh, as collective sectors was the laggard in our in our domestic economy. Uh, you know, they've had the biggest reductions in in labour numbers. We've had thousands of businesses forcibly closed or gone into hibernation or been iced. I mean, the reality is, uh, you know, we've been significantly hit on any measure, and these are the federal government's own figures playing back to them. It was the best part of a $90 billion drop in the economic value of that broader tourism and visitor economy. And this is in a, in a one-year period. So on any level and any scale, it was, it was a significant impact. Uh, the, the sad bit about JobKeeper was it was such great public policy. It was very expensive, but a lot of a lot of tourism businesses were still on that third third wave, if you like, the third and last tranche of the of the program. And uh, obviously, we were arguing pretty strongly and fervently, and providing a lot of evidence that uh, we needed a little bit more time. But the position was that the program had to end, and other supplementary support arrangements would be looked at, considered, and, and hopefully in time. Uh, brought out to the industry because we've still got a long, a long way to crawl back. Yeah, it certainly is. Simon Westway, appreciate you joining us as always. Thanks so much. Thank you.